Now, our next guest uh, was raised in a typical American neighborhood. He attended Sunday school and church, but like so many other ordinary American youth, he became a prime target for the deadly drug cocaine. And here to share his incredible story, please welcome to the 700 Club from Nashville, Tennessee, Robert Scales. Robert, it's good to have you with us. All right. You were in high school, Nashville, nice town, Music City, USA. <laughs> Somebody, somewhere, got you to take s some crack. Who was it? How did it start? Well, I was a basketball star in high school at Hillsborough High in Nashville. And as I went to college, I, I sort of got around the wrong crowd. Yeah. And uh, it led me to smoking marijuana. Um, I started gambling. I, I, I loved to gamble, and I smoked marijuana. I loved to drink beer and drink wine. Uh, as Why are you still playing basketball? Well, I, after I went to college. Yeah, were yes. you playing ball in college? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And no. you, you were smoking marijuana, marijuana, drinking beer, yes. wine? Smoking cigarettes. cigarettes, yes. And that didn't, that didn't hurt you? No. No, it didn't hurt me. No, I, I, I kept playing. It didn't hurt me. I was in such good shape, and, and I hid it. I hid it real well. Yeah? Yeah, I hid it real well. How did you, the, the, first, the first marijuana, how does it start? Did somebody say, hey, here's a joint, it'll make you feel good, or what happened? That's exactly how it started. I, I had some friends that was playing on the basketball team with me, and they had been smoking it, and they asked me to try it, and I did. Crack. We've been talking about crack. You moved up the ladder. People usually do. It's marijuana's a little tame. Let's go to the next shot. Okay. Marijuana you... led me to crack. All right. Okay, and, and that's why I brought that up, because as, as I went on, the, that drug led me to using crack. Now, I had, I had been snorting cocaine for about six, seven years, and I was around crack, but I had never tried it because I seen how it was doing my friends. But I got tempted to mm -hmm. use it, and I tried it one Who night. Who tempted you? How, how, my what is best friend. Setting? Your best friend? My best friend. Boy, you don't need friends like that, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. No, but my best friend uh, uh, did that, and... Uh, and what did he say? This will take you to the moon or to the stars, or this is the greatest high you ever saw? Well, how did he, I mean, you knew it was bad. You knew it Well, I was already it. getting high, and, and uh -huh. I was curious about how it, how it felt. I was really curious. That's what led me to try it. I was curious of, of why he was crawling on the floor and why it was making him uh, act the way he was acting. I was he curious. He was crawling on the floor, and you oh, wanted yeah. to be like down the floor? Yeah, I wondered how, how it made him feel. What if he'd put his head in the toilet and flushed it? Would you want to do that, too? I mean, that doesn't make well, any sense. Well, when you're high on drugs, you know, you're not making sense in your life. Is that right? That's right. So how much did the first uh, rock, or whatever you call it, how much did it cost you? Well, it probably cost, we probably did about four or $500 just that first time. Four or five hundred dollars at, at like ten dollars a, a pop? Yeah, well, we, we didn't buy it like that. We just went and bought a big quantity of it. And you did it all at one time? Yeah, it took about seven, eight hours. I'm telling you, it's a miracle you're here. Well, that was just that was just the beginning. See, that's not the end. See, the, the, the crack progressed and, and it took me through stages. And and it, it started tormenting my life. And um, I was being tormented every day of my life. I was just totally in pain. I, I was working on a job. I just walked off my job and quit. I started selling drugs. I was robbing people. I, 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 took, I stopped taking baths. Um, it, it, it took me all the way down, and uh, I had lost all my weight. I think I weighed uh, 140 some pounds. And uh, my hey, face you, was drawn in. You weren't playing sports anymore. You, no, you no, know. I was doing sports. This was in 84. All right, this is later, okay. Yeah, this is later. And so your life is completely ruined. Oh, yes, completely. But you had to have it. I mean, was there, I mean, was there this, uh, what happened if you didn't get this? I'd rob you to get it. If, Just I, had, if I had the chance. Broad it, daylight. It took, yeah, it didn't matter about broad daylight. It, it took all my self-esteem, all my respect for people. I, I wasn't like this before I did, used crack. Did you have cramps? Did you have headaches? Did you have nausea if you didn't get it? Well, what, what does it do to the inside? It's a, it's a, you get a craving, and, and uh, it's, a, it's a real bad craving that comes in your mind. It torments you. It's demonic, and it torments you, and, and it, 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 it eats your body up. It eats your body up. You stay in pain. 
You stay in you pain? stay in pain. Even when you're taking the stuff? Even when, when you're taking it, right at the beginning, probably the first five or ten minutes when you first hit crack, you're, you're not in pain. But ever since you're in pain? Yeah, you're in pain. Your, your joints, I mean, everything yeah, is Yeah, you're, you're in pain. You're in pain mentally and physically. But you want you kept keep on. You can't going. you can't help. It. You can't help you. You can't help. You got to have crack. It's it's a it's a drug. It's five times more addicting than heroin. People really don't realize the state of this drug, but it it is killing the society. I I, I use crack with some some young men nine and ten eleven years old. They were selling crack and and we was running uh, cars trying to get crack. I mean trying to sell it. So the dealers of crack have got people like you. You're like programmed. You've got to steal to bring them the money. And so they, they've got thousands of thieves all over a community stealing, killing, robbing, doing everything they can do to bring the money to these crack dealers. Ain't no question. And they bring it. I mean, I mean thousands and hundreds of thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands. I know some, some people that, that, that young boys, 16, 17 years old, got hundreds of thousands of dollars. You ask those guys to go to work for a minimum wage, four dollars an hour or something, no way. No, they and and, and, right. and you know, they, they get involved in this and, and they yeah. can't get out. Well, at the bottom of this, how did you know you needed help? I mean, some people just go ahead and die. They just keep taking it until there's no I mean, you'd almost pass no point, no return. How did you come back? What brought you back? I was I was suicidal. I wanted yeah. to die. I, I really did. I just didn't have the nerve to kill myself. But I wanted to die. I wanted somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would take uh, uh, unnecessary chances. But um, I, I knew that, that I needed something to deliver me. And, yeah. and uh, I knew that Jesus Christ could do it. But I would not go to him. I would not pray yeah. and ask him to come in my life. It was just something was just blocking me from doing this. But what you finally came through. You knew in your heart. You're, here you are, you're virtually dying. You want to commit suicide. Your body's aching. You've got this uh, monkey that is demonic driving you. Your mind is, 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 is blown. And, and uh, yet you didn't want to come to Jesus. Oh, well, I went, I went to a treatment center and I was playing games. Yeah. I wanted to stop using drugs, but I didn't want to stop gambling. I didn't want to stop the, the other life I was living. Of, of pimping and, 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 uh, and running women crazy. See, I didn't want to give that up. I just wanted to stop using crack. You're doing that too. You didn't get into that part. You, no. you, you, you. <laughs> My word. Uh, I tell you, you know, the Bible says it's joy of the angels of heaven. Of one sinner that repents, he really got a jewel and he got you. I'm telling you. <laughs> 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 Praise the Lord. So, so, well, what, what, what finally brought you to him? What happened? Well, I, I went to a treatment center. I admitted myself uh -huh. in a treatment center to, to get help. And um, as I was there, I, I, I asked God to take the taste of drugs out of my, out of my life. And I was serious. And, and I, I kept praying and praying. And, and about, a, about a week later, the, the desire of drugs left my body. I mean, left. I, I cried out to Jesus. And, and uh, he, he heard my cry. But I hadn't gave him my full life yet. <laughs> but he took the desire of drugs out of my life. All right. He took, and then I had a young man came up to me and told me that I was going back and use crack again because I was going right back out there in the same world sure. and that I was going to be around it. And it, it kind of like was a heavy burden on me. And, and, and I knew he was telling the truth. And I had seen, I had tasted a little good of how it mm. felt not having that craving desire. Mm. And I didn't want to give it up. So I cried for about two nights. And, and I said, God, I don't have the strength to give up gambling and women. I didn't have the strength to do that. And I said, Jesus, I just totally surrender my life to you. Yeah. And that third morning, I was delivered from gambling, from smoking cigarettes, from drinking. I was an alcoholic. I got totally set free. Praise it. You mean everything goes? Every time. Every time goes. <laughs> that is incredible. You sit here today and you say you don't have any desire for alcohol, no desire for crack cocaine or anything? No, no desire. I didn't even have no, no, no flashbacks. I, I, I got totally delivered. As a matter of fact, I hate the drugs. I've been hating them for 13 months. Well, that is, is very unusual, isn't it? Well, no, it's not. Not it's when not. you totally commit your life to Jesus. It's not yeah. unusual. But these guys that try to go to these treatment centers, they don't, I mean, a, a crack well, addict is not going to do something to his head to get him out of that. He's, he's, playing, he's playing games. He has to surrender. He needs Jesus. That's, that's, Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. 
and but, he, they need Jesus. Well, you're telling people today, they're watching this, if they've got cocaine, they've got crack, they've got um, whatever habit, the Jesus, right now. I minister to away. a lot of drug addicts. I yeah. minister to a lot of them, and I'm watching God set them free. I mean, take the taste right out of their mouths. Their lives are changing, and they're becoming on fire for Jesus. Right. Oh, I'm seeing miracles every day. God's, God's blessing. But it's a total commitment of Jesus Christ in your life, and yeah. that's all it takes. It's so simple that people can't understand it. I believe it's so it. simple. I believe it. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, what Robert Scales says is absolutely true. Jesus is Lord. Is this crack cocaine just physical? I don't think so. I think it's what he said is demonic. It is demonic. It is Satan's attempt to destroy the young people of this nation and the older people as well. And he has come to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That's the difference between the, quote, pleasures of the world and the joy of Jesus. Now, if you want to be free, and some of you right now, you've got to be serious. You've got to mean it. Do you really want to be free of cocaine? Do you really want to be free of crack? Do you really want to be free of alcohol or cigarettes or marijuana or lust or whatever it is? Do you want to get free? today? And if your answer is yes, I want you to pray with me right now. I want you to bow your head and I want you to believe God and pray from your heart and mean it. And you're going to see a miracle in your life this very day. Pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Do it. I admit that I am a sinner. Jesus, I have been abusing my body and my mind and my spirit. And I am sorry, Lord. I repent, Jesus. I turn away from that which has addicted me. And I curse it. And I command it to leave me in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord... I believe you died for me, and I believe you rose again from the grave. Come now, fill me, Lord, with yourself. Come into my heart, live your life in me, and from this moment on, I belong to you. I surrender completely to you. All my desire, all my will, all of my sin, I give it all to you now. In Jesus' name, and I thank you that I'm free. Come now, fill me with yourself. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Cast out everything in me that's wrong. Jesus. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, that I am free, and from this moment on, I belong to you. Now, Father, I pray for those who prayed with me, and I bind this spirit that is upon them, a spirit of alcohol, a spirit of nicotine, a spirit of wasting addiction. In the name of Jesus, may Satan and all the evil forces leave you. In Jesus' name, come out of them. Jesus. And set them free from this moment on. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Wherever you are, this is an important moment for you. I want you to start praising the Lord. And like Robert, you've got to get out of that environment. You don't go back into it. You go someplace and begin to live for the Lord. Now, we've got a little booklet called What Now? I'll tell you what to do next about reading the Bible, about praying, about going to church, about meeting with people. I want you to get on the phone and call 804-420-0700. And you say, hey, I'm free. I just prayed to that man on television. I am free. You get together with some Christians, people that love God, and, and they're people in your community. You've got to find them. Do a little something. You go find the crack dealer. Now you go find the people who love God. <laughs> and uh, you share with them what God has done with you and get together in a fellowship. But we'll send you that little book free, but I want you to call. I want you to confess what you've done right now and give Jesus Christ the glory. Robert, good stuff. God bless you, brother. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you.